Hi guys, my name is Borro Dante. Now let's talk about GOM on PD1560 a week later. So as usual, this is just an additional video to the main review of PD1560 that we did obviously a week ago. If you haven't seen it, the link is right here. And in this video, I'm not gonna talk about all the aspects of this device, but instead I'm just gonna make a little updates on some things that I haven't figured out completely in the first video or something like that. So first of all, the impression a week later is pretty much the same. I have no problems with anything about this display except for its lack of rubbery surface on the bottom edge of the device. And what I actually did is I used uh, a some kind of plastic foam that I found from packaging of some other device and just glued it to the bottom edge. It had a kind of a convenient indent in there. So I put this semi rubbery plasticky foam. It's really soft and kind of thick. Anyway, my point is that there are plenty of ways to make this thing not be so slippery as it is out of the box. So yeah, generally the whole performance working on it is really amazing. I love everything about it. It's just a great working experience with uh, just the right size of the display. PD1560 is almost 16 inch and my companion 2 that I've been using for almost two years on this channel was 13 and a half inch. So this is just perfect for me. It's a little increasement in size and its density of pixels is just enough to not see the gaps between the pixels but at the same time I can tell every pixel apart like I can work with the actual pixel precision and I don't have to use like the upscaling of the interface of Windows so it works in 100% scale as the rest of the displays on my Windows 10 system if you do have displays with high density you know that this is sort of important because it's kind of a mess when one display increases the scale of all the buttons buttons and text when you move windows to it it's just kind of gross and not all apps support that upscaling you have some kind of crop text sometimes in this case I could just bring it to a hundred percent scale and it's just perfect as it is like nothing is too small it's just right oh and one more thing that I almost forgot to mention is that when I compare it to companion 2 and I say that it's only better than companion 2 it's true for pretty much everything in the form factor factor in the fact that the display is a bit bigger, in the fact that I don't care about the lack of tilt, but one thing that it kind of lacks, and I think absolutely every Chinese developer tablet lacks as well, is the touch. This is a drawing display that doesn't have touch at all. It doesn't really bother me that much when I actually paint, because I mostly work in Paintstorm Studio that doesn't support touch. I'm just used to use alt control space combinations with the click to navigate but in Photoshop for instance you could use the all the gestures really well to zoom in and all that plus when you're scrolling through anything on the internet or in the file system it's really useful to have touch especially when the display is right in front of you it's much closer than the keyboard even touch would be a good thing to add it would be a nice touch again not a disaster because mostly when I paint I'm still not used to using the touch so whatever plus the touch on Windows or Android sucks anyway, it's only awesome on iOS, where you can actually draw and touch at the same time, which is a thing only on iPads. So yeah, I have a few notes, especially some of them are from the comments that you guys left, and the main comment is actually about something that Gaumann says about their display themselves, it's right here. As you can see, the amount of colors of this display is actually 6 bit per channel, instead of common 8 bit per channel. And you guys pointed it out and asked me about whether I see any kind of problem with the colors, which is supposed to be like six bits. Technically, this sounds really bad because that means we remove two digits from the number of colors for each channel. So instead of 256 shades per R, G or B, we get 64. That's like a lot less. But thing is, I haven't found a single problem with that. I looked at the grayscale 
scale, test pictures to just see at least something. And it's just a perfect gradient. Probably makes no sense to do it like this. Yeah, right, like you're gonna see anything like this. Anyway, I don't see anything. In fact, when I moved it to my main display that has... The longer I make reviews of displays, the more I understand how horrible my old display is. Because actually on this gradient right here, it has kind of like weird steps. Not actual color bending, but colors are just weirdly compressed in some areas or something. Like it has the weirdest everything about it. So I also looked up the actual separate channel tests. Like it's hard to test it like this. I can see little steps right here, but I think this is pretty much a normal thing for the actual 8-bit color depth. 8-bit has color bending if you look closely at separate gradients like this when they're long enough. So super tiny, they're smaller than this uh, lens cursor that I have right now. I can kind of see them and I see them as well on other two displays that I have right here. So I don't know, this looks to me like a perfect 8-bit color depth. So I did a little three second research on Google and well, there was a forum post right here where someone asks about what's the difference between eight and six bit. And one answer that actually brought some light to the whole situation is right here. Martin H says that while it is technically true that six bits has much less colors generally, any recent screen uses dithering to get nearly the full color range. So. We have 16.2 million colors when pure 8-bit would have 16.7 million. And it's done by changing the pixel quickly. So I guess sometimes you would see a little barely noticeable flickering of a certain shade of gray. I remember I saw it somewhere, maybe on this display. Maybe this is also a 6-bit display, but I don't know if, if many people know what I'm talking about. But sometimes you can see it. I don't know what that is. Probably this is what it is. This is probably a 6-bit display. <laughs> The point is that there are a few of tricks that smaller color depth displays would use to simulate a full range of 8-bit displays. Also, it's altering the shade of nearby pixels. So basically, it's creating like, you know, in the old school graphics, it has like a chest positioning of colors to simulate the in-between color of them and stuff like that. Not only that, there is a bunch of different tricks they use to simulate that. So that's how I can explain the fact that I don't see any problem like I don't see any color bending on this color rectangle right here let me stretch it oh there is actually a limit <laughs> So yeah, no color layers or anything. Definitely not something that I would expect from actual 64 shades per channel. I don't see any lines or anything. Like this is a pure beautiful color box. So there's that, but do keep in mind that technically this is a 18-bit display. Six bits per channel of red, green, and blue. Okay, what else? Yeah, the driver update. This is actually funny. I haven't actually talked to Gaumon guys after I released the first review. And if you remember, I changed something in the settings like this when I was demonstrating the layout and everything. Then I pressed cancel and in this button, there was actually a not canceled change that I made. It would be like control E. After that, I looked up the update for the driver just myself and I noticed that they have a literally yesterday update and I installed it and this little glitch is gone. So <laughs> they watched and they changed that, which is kind of really nice. <laughs> so yeah, the driver has no problems with anything anymore. Oh yeah, and another thing, I probably won't be able to show it to you at all. This is actually uh, another little glitch with the driver, I would probably say. Hopefully the guys from Gaumon will watch this video as well. It's really hard to show it because it happens kind of rarely, but frequently enough to kind of bother you. Anyway, the point is that when the driver is on and you have the icon in the tray, even when it's hidden like this, it will sometimes kind of restart. It will show up as a gray version of this icon and then go back again, either right here or hiding back into this panel again. It happens for about half a second. And if you're like watching a full screen movie or doing something else full screen, the whole taskbar will blink into your view for half a second or maybe for a second. So the 
there's something about driver that it restarts itself every now and then. I probably won't be able to show it to you like this, maybe later I will just record my display for an hour and it will show up, but yeah, that's just the thing that happens. Keep in mind that the current version of the driver, at least for the next week, will have this little glitch that it kind of blinks every now and then a little bit. It's almost nothing, but it's kind of a bit annoying and it's 100% this driver because when I turn it off, I never get this glitch. So it's definitely that thing. All right, what's next? Yeah, the thing that I forgot to specifically mention in the previous video, although I kind of pointed it out, that since this pan is identical to the pan in its brains, it's the same kind of pan that Huion GT191 has, it has the same kind of nuance of the fact that you have to have this kind of distance when you press the pen. It starts working immediately, like when you just barely touch the display, you're already drawing a very semi-transparent line. So it has a good start point of detecting the stroke, which is good, but probably not everyone will like the fact that you have to press for such a long distance. This is, uh, I think, more than a millimeter, right? Maybe just about the millimeter of distance when you press the button. So what it feels like is a very soft touch. It's kind of a bit close to what you actually feel when you paint with the actual brush with oil paint or acrylic paint. So for me personally, this is like perfect because I barely ever draw, I mostly paint. But yeah, keep in mind that this is a thing. It's probably something I should always mention if it happens with a pen of the drawing device. So yeah, aside from that, it only doesn't have tilt, but it's perfect. It's really precise. It has no wobbling whatsoever. It's a real really great pen. Also, by the way, you see I'm using the stand that is not the native stand of this pen of this device. Just because it has a heavier bottom, it's from the different brand. After a little while, I noticed that the one that comes in the box, the fact that it's really light, it kind of starts to bother you after a little while. It feels like you can so easily just displace it with the accidental touch or anything. This other one has a rubbery bottom and a heavy bottom as well. So it kind of grasps for the surface of the table and the one that came in the box It's really light and it has a pure plastic bottom So it has no grasp like it just slides all over the table when you accidentally touch it or apply any kind of Speed to the pen when you drop the pen into the thing and it's kind of sliding around But as far as I know very few people actually use these for some reason I don't know where you people put your pens then but yeah, I usually use at least one and yeah, I guess this is it literally nothing else changed in my opinion the display is perfect even though the numbers are against that it's actually the best display i have in this system right now a really fast responsive pen with the really great precision i don't know i'm just repeating myself over and over again this is really a great device it's absolutely cold it's really light it has long and reliable cables you can move it around it's really nice to work with also one more thing that i I forgot to mention the cable of this thing the the power cable doesn't have a brick this is the first drawing display including both generations of mobile Wacom's that doesn't have an actual brick when you connect two things it's just two connectors without a brick and it supplies the display with power through USB Type-C, which is really clean and awesome. The cable part is just amazing. I love it so much. So yeah, I guess let's keep this video short. This is it about this device. Anything I had to add about it? Ask more questions about PD1560 if you have any. And I thank you for watching. If you did, I guess you did. If you're here, leave a like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Check out the links in the description. Do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.